So the last bit um, we need to think about in terms of a, a methodology is the, is the selection. And here I use the metaphor of an upside down tree, so the roots of a tree. You see my hand here, imagine my wrist is, is the trunk, we've turned that upside down, and then my fingers are the root system. And essentially what you're trying to argue is you start with the ability to do any kind of research you like. And essentially that then splits two ways into qual and quants. So then you've got a decision tree that starts to split. And then within quant uh, quantitative methods, you've got many different methods that you can look at. One that's particularly popular with students is, um, <clears throat> um, is, is, is questionnaires, which used to be delivered in person or, or by paper, by mail, uh, or, or these days online, and the online one's quite successful and popular, but it also can include some, some big data stuff, some quantitative uh, content analysis and alike. There are a number, a number of other uh, quantitative methods that you can look at. And equally, there are a number of qualitative methods that you can think about. On the other hand, literally on the other hand, um, the ones that are most popular are the one-to-one -one in-depth interviews. And here, five interviews with an industry expert would be fantastic. Um, perhaps some more interviews with non-experts, with consumers, where you would do things like student perceptions of or young, uh, young, uh, young international students' perceptions of, um, uh, you know, um, of anything really. I'm, I'm struggling to find the ideas, um, brands, positions, consumption, politics, whatever you want to be. Um, you can also do, uh, it's quite effective, quite popular, with focus groups. Yeah, so, um, and, and there are a couple of other, there, there's um, an ethnography, which is where you follow, uh, follow something in depth. Um, a really good paper I read um, was about a lady who hung out with uh, uh, Hells Angels bikers, but she did that for three years, included photos in her paper, um, and that's kind of PhD level and beyond PhD level usually. Um, so those, those are the sorts of things. So you think about this decision tree that starts with the trunk and then splits two ways, qual and quant, and then within each of those. Now what you have to do is justify why you got to this one and why you didn't use these ones and why when you had the choice between qual and quant, you went qual or quant, or whichever way you do it. Now frankly, it doesn't matter. And frankly, most research can be done in a number of different ways. So really what you need to be thinking about is what research do I feel comfortable doing? Um, what research can I reasonably achieve? Yeah, have I got the social capital to get hold of five experts in industry? And some of you have, and, and, and those papers tend to be really, really good because they benefit from kind of uh, industry insight from senior, you know, senior slash experienced people. Uh, and the students who tend to do that also enjoy uh, their dissertation much more. Um, of course, the, 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 the path of least resistance, the one that's most common, the one that a lot of people end up doing is the kind of the, the student survey. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Absolutely fine to, to do that. But just, you know, just don't leave it to the last minute. That's, that's something that uh, um, a, a lot of people end up doing. And, 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 and the advice that I would give, if you, if you can't decide between qual and quants, um, quantitative, if you're good at numbers and good at following a process, it's a fairly straightforward process. Often you're going to be using something like SPSS or statistical software analysis package in Excel. Um, and if, if that sends the, sets the alarm bells ringing, then the, the quantitative is not for you. Um, if, you've, if you've done that already and you're capable and confident about doing that, that's a good thing. Um, one of the, the hidden um, challenges, I think, of quantitative analysis is the ability to write a really good questionnaire. So I think it's a step-by-step -step process. If you're good at numbers and understand what, what the research process is, it's not difficult. Writing a good questionnaire and figuring out how you're going to set your questions is particularly challenging. Uh, and th and actually that's the, that's, the, that's the thing that decides whether the paper is going to be really good, mediocre or, or weak is, is the quality of the questions and the thinking that goes into it. And actually you can spend a lot of time uh, pulling together you know, one or two pages of, uh, uh, of appropriate questions. Um, in terms of qualitative, you know, uh, I think quite popular are, uh, are perception interviews, focus groups, one-on-one -on -one interviews. Um, and here's 
here, here we tend to encourage students to develop transcripts to, to come up with really good analysis and that can be very time consuming um, and the analysis bit is then perhaps more challenging and you have to link together lots of complicated difficult ideas so um, those, those, there's no right or wrong answer there's no right uh, there's no one way to go about addressing uh, a dissertation I think what you really need to do is sit down and think about what can I do and you know what am I going to be excited and interesting in, in making happen.